What's up YouTube, I'm Guy. Today on the channel we are going to be checking out a watch that will most certainly be one of my future purchases. What we're looking at today is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36mm reference 116000. This watch is on loan from my friends over at Exquisite Timepieces. This came out of their pre-owned inventory and a very big thank you to the guys over there for letting me borrow this watch. If you'd like to learn more about Exquisite Timepieces, please go over to their website, exquisitetimepieces.com, and if you happen to call them up and talk watches, and if you speak to Evan, let him know that you heard about their store from Guy and the Just Bluefish channel. So if you've been following me now for a while, you'll know that I've mentioned this watch numerous times. It is extremely interesting to me. I think that the size, the proportions on this watch are absolutely outstanding, but Having not had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with it, I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to pull the trigger. When I saw that Exquisite Timepieces had one in their pre-owned inventory, I had to borrow it for a day or two and get to know it a little bit better, and what I know is that I do love it. One quick message before we jump over to the tabletop, I am doing a giveaway. I would like you to go into my video library and find my official 10,000 subscriber giveaway announcement video. Watch that video. There's a lot of really cool things being being given away in the next month or so, and I don't want you to miss out on it. So go find that video and watch it. All right, guys, here we have it. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter reference number 116000. A lot of people have asked me about this watch. In particular, in comparison to my old Rolex Explorer. Well, about this watch and the 39 millimeter version, but they're effectively the same watches, just different sizes. Uh, and when we're talking about those two Oyster Perpetual models anyway, tons of, tons of questions though. How does, how does an Oyster Perpetual compare to an Explorer? I'm going to talk about those comparisons in this video and basically tell you what I think about this watch. Overall, point blank, I love this watch. I am very strongly considering buying one for myself, but more on that in a minute. Basic specs on this guy. 36 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the crown. No crown guards on this case, which I kind of like that. I think that it just slims it down, makes it very, very sleek. Very good design decision to just have the crown on the side of the case here. I digress though. 36 millimeters across the case with a 20 millimeter lug width. We have an overall thickness on this watch of right around 11 and a half, maybe 12 millimeters tops. And from tip to tip, from lug to lug, from one edge of the case to the other, or what I like to call the watch's wingspan, 44 millimeters. Overall, the proportions or the dimensions of this watch, I guess I should say, are great. It sounds like it would be a small watch though, and I can tell you that in person, this does not feel like a small watch. Is it a quote-unquote super case like we find on some of the other Rolex model watches like the Submariner and the GMT? No, it's not a super case, but it is very nicely proportioned. There is a little bit of a thickness to the lugs. They are nice tapering lugs. They come to a very crisp point, but it's not a very, very skinny, delicate little lug. So this watch does feel a little bit bigger than the 36 millimeters might suggest, perhaps closer to 37 or even 38 millimeters when you look at it on the wrist. Of course, we have all of the hallmarks of Rolex quality here. 904L stainless steel in the Oyster style case. Again, a 904L steel for the Oyster bracelet, three piece link Oyster bracelet. The crystal is of a sapphire construction, no anti-reflective coating, which is typical. The overall fit and finish is outstanding with uh, a screw down crown, twin lock in this case, 100 meters of water resistance though a screw down case back with no real decoration or embellishments whatsoever. Of course, we do have a superlative chronometer, the Rolex in-house caliber 3130 movement superlative chronometer, meaning that we have an accuracy range of plus or minus two seconds per day. This movement does have a 48 hour power reserve. It will run at 28,800 vibrations per hour. 
an excellent movement, time-tested, very durable. Overall, you really can't say enough good things about the movements in all of these Rolex watches. Despite the fact that this is probably considered, at least in the men's section of Rolex's catalog, the entry level at $5,400, there is no lack of quality here. The overall fit and finish of the case is outstanding, and this is, of course, a pre-owned watch, so there's going to be some, like, scuffs and, and whatnot. But high-quality, polished stainless steel flanks of the cases, very nice brushing on the tops of the lugs, matching up nicely with the solid end links. Again, high polished on this side of the case. The twin lock crown designated by the little dash under the coronet logo is of course screw down and very easy to manipulate despite the fact that it is a relatively small little crown. Hand winding the movement, simple as you would expect, pulling the crown out to the first and only position since this is a non-date model, hacks the movement, and you can set the time as necessary. An interesting feature about this watch is the bezel, a high polished domed bezel. This is one of the first differences between this Oyster Perpetual, be it the 36 or the 39 millimeter, and the Explorer. The Explorer has a smooth bezel, it's not this dome or arced curvatured bezel. If we look at it in profile you can see that it's not flat, there is most de definitely a, an arch or, or a dome there. Does it look as nice as the flat, smooth bezel that you find on the Explorer? Well, that's going to boil down to personal taste. I'll say in some regards it does, but in others it doesn't. I think it does because it's not as broad. On the Explorer 39mm, the most recent model, the bezel from edge to edge is very broad. I think it's too broad in my opinion. The proportions aren't quite right. Proportionally, this bezel is very good, but I think it is not as aesthetically pleasing with the dome as you might have if it were a flat bezel. Uh, personal taste, you may or may not, you know, your, your mileage may or may not vary, I guess is one way that I would say that, but that's how I feel about it. Otherwise, it's very nicely done, high polish, just like the excellent polishing on the sides of the case and the sides of the bracelet, but yeah, definitely not the same as the Explorer's bezel. One of the things that people have asked me about many, many times. The crystal is a flat sapphire crystal. If we look at it in profile, you can see that it does stand proud of the bezel ever so slightly. A problem with Rolex crystals, in my opinion, is that they are very reflective. This one is no different. Rolex does not use AR coating or treatments on their crystals, and frankly, it's a little bit of a problem when it comes to legibility. Being as it's sapphire, it's highly scratch resistant. It is a very nice crystal, but if the light is bright, you will get some glare. The dial is what Rolex calls their steel dial. It's basically a sunburst gray dial. It looks very nice, but there is not nearly enough contrast between the dial itself and both the hour markers or the handset for me. I find it difficult to read depending on the lighting situation. I would much prefer a black dial or potentially even a white dial. I don't think that I could wear this watch regularly because that coloration does impede the legibility of this watch. The applied markers on the dial are, of course, of 18 karat white gold, as is the stick or baton style handset, the applied Rolex coronet logo up at the 12 o'clock position as well. The rest of the dial, basic printing, Rolex Oyster Perpetual on the top, superlative chronometer officially certified. I like the touch that they have added on the minutes track or seconds track outboard of those applied hour markers. You have hash marks or graduations for each individual minute, but you have an Arabic numeral 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on at each five minute or five second interval. I really do like that quite a bit. I think that it makes this dial a little more sporty. Another thing that I like about the dial, and I have found that a lot of people dislike this, the three, six, and nine markers are double baton or double stick markers. I think it looks cool. A lot of people I've seen complain about this and say they wish it was just sticks or batons like every other marker on the dial. I prefer this type of layout and I think that it looks great. I think in person it's even less noticeable. I think a lot of times people see watches in pictures online and the pictures are blown up, high resolution, very large, and they get a little caught up with certain design details. 
that don't stand out nearly as much in person. This is one of those examples. These double sticks or double batons are not as in your face or loud feeling in person as it might be in pictures online or probably in this video zoomed in like this. Take my word for it, see one in person before you come to a conclusion. I think the layout on this dial is absolutely top notch. Of course, we have a three-piece link oyster style bracelet, solid end links, T-shaped extended end links, very typical of uh, oyster style bracelets, very nicely done. The links themselves are, you know, screwed in, high quality, excellent. Now, one of the big differences between the Oyster Perpetual line of watches and the Rolex Explorer are going to be in the clasp on the bracelet. An Explorer has a fold-over safety latch, an Explorer has a 5mm Easy Link extension. This clasp is just a simple hinged Oyster lock clasp. No fold-over safety latch, and as you can see on the underside, no easy link extension. There are three little detents inside the clasp that you can adjust with spring bar tools for some level of micro adjustment, but no tool tool adjustment. You do need to get in there with a the spring bar and move the whole bracelet fore and aft in the clasp if you want any micro adjustment. That said, I found that the fit on my wrist is absolutely perfect. I can find a good fit with those three little micro adjusts. The clasp itself, very nice, high quality machine, stainless steel, brushed finish. The Rolex Coronet logo engraved in the clasp as opposed to being on the fold over safety latch like you would find on the Explorer. Uh, overall, the swing arm is basically of the same high quality, stainless steel machined, high polished, very nicely done. That's going to be a big difference between your quote-unquote sports watch, the Explorer, and the Oyster Perpetuals, or another big difference. So, how does a 36mm OP wear on a 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist? I think it wears perfectly. I absolutely love the way that this rides on my wrist. It is, again, 44 millimeters from lug to lug, so I have plenty of wrist on the top and the bottom. I'm not testing the uh, outer extremities of the circumference of my wrist. And given that this is a fully extended T-style end link, it does make it kind of stretch out even another millimeter or two further on either side. So overall, Anyone under a 7-inch wrist should seriously consider this watch if you want a Rolex, but you don't want to wait because of, you know, the shortage of watches. If you're thinking about uh, one of the stainless steel watches that are in short supply right now, and you don't want to wait months, months, potentially years, consider one of these watches. I think that it is outstanding. The clasp, quite nice. Again, just a simple flip open, but works very well. I will say that this edge of the clasp where you interface to unlock it is a little bit on the sharp side. It could be smoothed out or rounded over. It would be a little bit more pleasurable to actuate or interface with as it stands right now. It's not so sharp that it wants to cut my finger, but it's not exactly comfortable. That is a small complaint with this clasp that I have not experienced on any of the fold over safety latch oysters clasps a little bit of a difference there now as far as value on this watch we'll talk about that in the closing options or, or closing thoughts final thoughts what have you but yeah i think this is a great value and again if you're thinking gee i want to get a rolex i want to get my first rolex do not dismiss this model do yourself a favor and go to an authorized dealer Try one on, ask them to size one up for you, see how it fits. If you don't like the 36, maybe try the 39. I strongly prefer the 36 personally, and I think that if you have a 7 inch or less wrist, you probably would too. But yeah, I do highly recommend giving it a shot. All right, guys, well, that's my presentation of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter reference 116,000. Again, I am pretty much in love with this watch. It fits my wrist exactly the way that I want. For me personally, and as you might know, I used to own the 39 millimeter uh, Rolex Explorer. For me personally, though, this size is much 
more preferable. The overall scale on my six and three quarter inch wrist is perfect. I thought that the proportions and the dimensions of that 39 millimeter Explorer just didn't personally work for me. And pretty much everything works for me once I get this thing on the wrist. Do I wish that it had a little bit of a better clasp on the bracelet and not this very, again, entry level for a Rolex style clasp? Yeah, I suppose it would be nice, but it's perfectly functional. There's a little bit of micro adjust in that clasp and um, relatively easy to size and get fitted to the wrist. N notwithstanding, there's also half links available. So even if I couldn't get an absolutely perfect fit, I could probably order a half link for 75 or 80 dollars from Rolex and really dial it in just the way I would like it. Now this particular model is what they call the steel dial. It's a gray dial for all intents and purposes. I'm not a fan of it. There's not enough contrast between the dial color and the handset for me personally. I would go with either the black or the white dial. Technically, I think for me, it's the black dial all the way. If someone asked me though, would you suggest getting this steel dial? Maybe if you have really good eyesight, that would be something that you could consider, but I just need way more contrast than what I find is available on this particular dial and handset combination. With the current shortage of stainless steel Rolex watches, I think you guys really need to consider the Oyster Perpetual in 36 millimeter, maybe even 39 millimeter if you're a little bit bigger wristed. And for maybe someone with a really small wrist, I believe they also have a 34 millimeter. I think you really need to consider these watches if you're having a hard time finding a stainless steel sports watch. For me personally, I could see having one sports watch like the Submariner, for example, which I do own, and then this is a more casual everyday kind of watch and don't get me wrong a Submariner is pretty casual but what I mean is that this is more understated I could see having something like the Submariner or maybe a GMT Master and then something like the 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual or the 39 millimeter and that would be the perfect one-two punch combo Rolex watch collection I, I really think you guys need to start considering these watches they are not getting enough love in the watch community and they are absolutely outstanding standing. Now of course if you want a date complication get the date just on a oyster bracelet and a smooth bezel instead of a fluted bezel that would be perfectly acceptable too but I say save the money and get the oyster perpetual instead and uh, yeah that would be an awesome one-two combo. If you're having trouble finding the sports watch that you want maybe consider getting one of these first because it's an absolutely fantastic understated casual too dressy it could serve both casual casual and dressy uh, stainless steel Rolex watch. Highly, highly recommended. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you'd like to help support the channel and support me, there's a number of ways that you can do that. And those ways are always found down in the description of my videos. Number one, there's links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Follow me over on those platforms. I would really appreciate it. Number two, if you'd like to throw a few bucks my way every month, I have a link to my Patreon. Big thanks to the guys that are over on Patreon supporting me right now. I really appreciate it, but I could always use some more help. Number three, if you like something that I've reviewed, you can always click my Amazon affiliate link down in the description before you do your Amazon shopping. Doesn't matter what you buy, I get a small commission with every single transaction that goes through that link, and those really do add up. A big, big thanks to everyone that's been using that Amazon affiliate link. Well, that's going to do it for today, so I will go ahead and say bye now.